Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. In this video we are going to be talking about WebSockets. So we're going to have a short uh, video tutorial on how to create a project that utilizes the WebSocket and how we can use it to send some messages or maybe some notifications and stuff like that. So that's something that most of the applications need and uh, it's really nice to have thing. Um, as you can see, I'm as always on the Spring Initializer web page where I have the setup of my base. So the base of my project, I'm using the Gradle project with uh, Java, of course, and some uh, metadata here. You can just copy paste this. It doesn't really matter. The important things are the dependencies. I have Spring Web and I have the WebSocket. So this is what you need. Uh, once you just enter it here, you can uh, generate the project. Uh, download the archive and import it into IntelliJ. So extract it and import it into IntelliJ. Then you will have something like this in your dependencies in the Brill Gradle file. As you can see, it's just an empty project here uh, with uh, some dependencies. And in addition, I have these. So these are the extra dependencies that you need, but they are not available on the Spring Initializer page. So you have to enter them uh, manually. Once you have done that, uh, you need to reload your Gradle project. You can, uh, some, some pop-up will show up here. You can just click it and it will do it for you. Or you can just choose the Gradle tab and then do it from here. With that done, you also want to go file settings and change this from Gradle to IntelliJ IDEA. So for both of them, click apply, click OK, and that's about it. So at this point, your uh, application is uh, ready to be started, but we still don't have anything uh, Gradle related, so we want to add that. So let's just start. The first thing that we want to do is uh, create our configuration class. So let's create a new empty Java class. Uh, let's name it something like WebSocket config. Uh, with that, uh, we have our class and we of course need to annotate it so that the Spring knows that this is our WebSocket configuration class. So we have two, config two annotations here. One is for the configuration so that Spring knows what it is. And we also want to enable the WebSocket message broker. Okay, now our uh, configuration class needs to implement this um, WebSocket message broker configurer so that it's able to configure it. So we're going to do that. And with that being done, we are going to override a couple of methods. So we are overriding uh, two methods, the configure message broker and the register stomp endpoints. We can actually make this final. And for our configuration, we want to do a couple of things. So here uh, in the registry, we want to enable the simple broker. So we want to give it some kind of a topic on which it's going to listen. And we also want to set our application destination prefix. So let's see how it looks that. So this is something that you uh, maybe want to do. So you want to set it to slash topic so that all of the destinations to which the WebSocket is going to be using for communication uh, start with slash topic so that you know uh, to where it belongs. And also your application destination prefix is slash yes. So as a WebSocket, basically this is what you can enter here, whatever you want. So whatever feels good for you. And the next thing is uh, you want to add an endpoint for, uh, for the WebSocket. So uh, let's see how we can do that. Yeah, so it's quite actually quite simple. So you have our uh, WebSocket. So again, you can name this endpoint, whatever you want. You're just going to be using it on the front end to subscribe to some things and stuff like that. So uh, when you're connecting to the SockJS, uh, yeah. So again, you can enter here whatever you want. With that being done, we are basically finished with the configuration. So this is a quite simple thing to do. Uh, we don't need anything special. Now we want to create some, um, yeah, some classes or some DTOs that we are going to be using. So uh, like, for example, let's say that we want to build an application that can um, send messages and receive messages. So we are going to have a front end where you can enter some message and it will go to the back end, but you also want it to appear like the response uh, to that message uh, to appear on the front end. So let's create uh, some uh, DTOs. So like our message the DTO that we are going to be sending and our response that we are going to be sending to the front end. So let's uh, just create a new folder. And let's create a class called message DTO. 
or let's just name it message. It doesn't really matter. And inside of our message class, we are just going to have a, a string called message content. So it's a really um, simple class with some string and getters and setters for it. The next thing that we want to do is we want to create a response message. So this, the response message is the one that we are going to be sending to the front end, so back. Uh, so let's create uh, that one. Again, it's just a normal Java class called response message. And as always, yeah, you can uh, name them as you, however you want. Yeah, so it has uh, one property, so a string called content and two constructors and getters and setters. Quite simple as basically it can get any simpler than this. <laughs> so let's see now how we can actually uh, send this. The next thing that we want to do is we want to create a controller. So this controller will be used to actually uh, receive the messages via WebSocket and send them back. So let's create some class called um, message controller. Uh, as you can see, it's a normal Java class annotated with add controller so that Spring knows uh, what it is. And here in this controller, we want to have one method which will be basically returning the response message class that we just created and it will be receiving the message class that we created also previously. So let's do that. And with that being done, we uh, actually want to add a couple of annotations. So the annotations are what's important here. So uh, the, there are two annotations here that are uh, we are going to be using. One is for receiving messages and the other one is to sending it back on a topic. So you specify the endpoint basically on which you are going to be receiving these messages and you also specify a topic on which you're going to respond. So the, in this tutorial I should probably mention that we are going to show two ways. We are going to show these ones with the endpoints and then we are also going to be using some service where we can send the messages without actually this controller. So let's add the annotations. And as you can see here, I have the mapping to slash messages. Basically, this will be WebSocket slash messages because in the configuration, we have added the destination prefix to be slash VS. So not really WebSocket, but VS. And also we have here topic because again, in the configuration, we have created it like that. And yeah, um, we are responding, responding to a topic messages. So whoever is subscribed to this topic will get the message that we sent from here. So let's uh, just make it simple. Let's add some sleep here so that we can simulate um, basically some kind of computation. I don't know. Yeah, let's sleep for one second. And uh, let's just add this. And with that, let's just return the response message. Yeah, so it's simple like that. We are uh, sleeping for one second. So to simulate just some uh, wait time and we are responding with the response message. I'm just esca escaping any special characters that might be received here in this uh, message that we are listening on this endpoint. And we are sending it back as the response. Basically our front end is going to be uh, taking care of the rest. Uh, for now, I'm going to end this video. So this is uh, what we wanted to show. Uh, in the next one, we are going to build our index page where we are going to uh, also subscribe to these topics and basically read these messages that we have. So uh, stick with me and I will show you the rest in the next video. Hopefully you like this. Uh, if you do, please do like the video and subscribe to my channel. If you do not, uh, leave me a message and I will try to improve upon the things that are you are not satisfied with. So I will see you in the next one.